boys, it's Arm None. In today's video, we're going to be ranking every single Declassy vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online in tier list form. Now, before we get into this video, there is something that you must know. This list is 100% factual and cannot be argued with. Everything that I say is 100% the truth and nothing but the truth. And if you think otherwise, you are simply wrong. If you can accept these terms and conditions, we will move into the tier list, starting off with F tier. However, if you cannot accept these terms and conditions, you should exit off of the video immediately. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with F tier. To start off the list, the worst Declassy vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online is of course, the burrito. Now this particular burrito is not actually purchasable. You have to find one of these off of the street or it is a mission vehicle as well. Technically, I guess you could purchase the Bug Stars version of this and it is technically a burrito. This thing is just underwhelming in pretty much every single aspect. It's kind of interesting that you can get like the different work vans, but it's not very good. It's not very quick. It's not a good performing vehicle. It's really just kind of mid. So that's pretty much it for the Declassy Burrito. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have the Declassy Gang Burrito. Now this is the Lost MC variant of the Gang Burrito. This thing is thievable off of the street. Uh, you can steal it from the Lost MC. However, you cannot keep it, so keep that in mind. However, there is a regular version of the Gang Burrito that is non-affiliated. They call it the non-affiliated Gang Burrito, and it goes for 65000 if you have the trade price unlocked and $86,000 if you do not have the trade price unlocked. The Gang Burrito is kind of unique. You can have somebody sitting in the back of it and shooting a machine gun out. It is only a four seater. It's not very quick. It doesn't handle very well. It's kind of cool, but it's not that cool at the same time. So that's the reason that it is the second worst Declassy vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have the Declassy Asia. Now the Asia is also Lester's car in Grand Theft Auto Online and it goes for $12,000. It is kind of a unique car because it has tons and tons of customization, especially at its very cheap $12,000 price point. Now performance wise, it's, well, it's not good, but it's kind of cool. I mean, you can give it a carbon hood, carbon roof, carbon trunk, big spoiler. You can also put stickers all over the vehicle. You can completely sticker bomb this thing. So it does have quite a bit of unique customization that you can do to it to make this thing more personalized. Is it a good car? Absolutely not, but for $12,000, you really cannot go wrong with owning one and upgrading one. It's not the slowest car either. It is front wheel drive though, so it's a bit less than ideal to drive, but it could be a lot worse. So that's pretty much it for the Declassy Asia. Let's move on to the next F tier vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Premier for $10,000. Now the Declassy Premier is actually a pretty unique car, and for only 10 grand you really cannot go wrong with this thing. Now the performance, like the Asia, is, well, not very good, but it does have a bit of customization, which is nice, obviously. We like to have some customization, especially on cheap cars like this. The acceleration is actually okay, the handling is decent for being front wheel drive, however of course the top speed is completely piss weak. It is still a good car and it's one you never see people driving in online, so for these reasons I do think that it is deserving over the Asia and the other vehicles that we've gone over so far, however it's not any better than F tier. So that's pretty much it for the Declassy Premier, let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Granger 3500 LX. This thing goes for $35,000, or of course it is stealable off of the street like pretty much any other car on this list. However, the Granger is a little bit more unique and a little bit better than some of the other cars on this list, I feel like, for a couple of different reasons. There's a fun fact, the Granger 3500 LX is actually faster than the Granger 3600 LX, which was released with the contract DLC in Grand Theft Auto Online, so that is kind of interesting. The Granger is also very unique because this is one of only a few vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online that can house eight players. So you can seat four people on the insides of this thing and you can have four people standing on the rails and hanging onto the roof rack on the outside of this vehicle. It's not very useful, but it is very unique, I think. And for that reason, I had to put the Granger ahead of all of the other vehicles so far. I think it's a very decent looking vehicle, and as far as SUV performance goes for this price range, the Granger is actually very, very good. It's quite quick, it handles nicely, 
Overall, there's really nothing to complain about. It's a very, very good vehicle, especially for something that you can steal right off of the street. So that's it for the Granger 3500. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Beater Voodoo. Now the Beater Voodoo goes for $5,500 on Benny's Original Motorworks, or of course you can steal it off of the street in Sandy Shores if you can manage to find one. Now the Voodoo is a very interesting car. As you guys can see, it's already pretty much slammed right to the ground. Performance-wise, this thing is pretty garbage. It's it's not exactly good in any particular way. The acceleration is okay and it actually does handle decently well for a $5,500 car, but it is a bit of a land yacht, so you're going to have to watch out for that. Now the reason that this thing is ahead of some of the other vehicles we've already gone over is because this thing does actually have a custom variant, which we will find a little bit later in this list. The Voodoo is okay. I'd say that I recommend getting one if you can manage to find one. I would not say to buy it. It really doesn't have much customization and it looks kind of terrible because it's all rusted. So you might not want to buy one of these until you're ready to make it into the custom variant if you even want one in the first place. So that's it for the Voodoo. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Tornado Convertible. Now this car is one that you're going to have to steal off the street. You cannot actually buy the convertible version of the Tornado, so therefore it does not have a price. However, this thing does have quite a bit of customization and it is quite a unique car. There aren't many older convertible cars in Grand Theft Auto Online, so getting one like this is quite rare. The Tornado obviously is a great looking car, I think everybody knows what the Tornado looks like. I remember seeing this thing in the trailer before Grand Theft Auto V even came out. The Tornado actually has pretty good performance, it is quite quick in a straight line, it has decent enough handling and quite a bit of customization, so there's really nothing to not like about this. I definitely recommend picking up a Tornado. And with that being said, it's time to move on to the last vehicle of F tier. And finally, for the final vehicle of F tier, we have the Declassy Tornado Rat Rod. Now the Rat Rod is a very unique vehicle, this thing was added with the Bikers update and it costs $300 $80,000 to purchase. So it's a lot more expensive than any of the other vehicles in F tier, however it's not that much better than any of the other vehicles in F tier. It is a little bit faster than the regular Tornado, do not get me wrong, this thing is much quicker in a straight line to be fair. However the handling is significantly worse I would say, um, this thing does not handle very well, it understeers profusely, which fair enough, it's not exactly meant to be a uh, track car I don't think, or meant to turn well. I think it's kind of just meant for going in a straight line really fast. However, it doesn't even really do that that well, so I couldn't really rank it any higher than F2, and I'm sure this is going to offend some people, but let's be reminded this list is 100% factual and cannot be argued with, so before you comment, better exit that video. So of course this is it for F tier, it's time to move on to C tier. Next up we have the regular Tornado, now this is the non-convertible version and this thing goes for $30,000. Now the Tornado is a great car, like I mentioned, it's basically the exact same performance as the convertible, so it's pretty good in a straight line, it handles decently well. It's got some customization and overall it's a great looking vehicle, as well as performance for 30 grand. you really cannot go wrong with this thing. Although there is one other vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online that goes for 30 grand that absolutely blows this thing out of the water. You guys probably know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, you need to look into it. So that's it for the Tornado, on to the next one. Next up we have the Declassy Tornado Custom. Now the Tornado Custom basically takes the convertible and makes it into a much better car. Gives you way more customization options, however it does come at a cost of $375,000, which is pretty significant considering that the regular car, well, you can steal it off of the street. However, it is still very, very cool. As you guys can see, this thing is completely pimped out, it's completely customized, and there's many more options that you can do to this thing beyond just what you see right here. This is a pretty basic customization of the Tornado Custom. The performance is ever so slightly improved as well with the Tornado Custom over the regular Tornado, so there is a bit of a performance increase with this as well. Although I don't know if it's 375k worth of a performance increase. but. To each their own if you guys like it definitely give one of these a shot so that's it for the tornado custom and that is it for the tornado there's no more variants of the tornado to go so let's move on to the next vehicle next up we have the declassy lifeguard now this thing goes for eight hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in order to buy it off of warstock cash and carry however if you know somebody who has a lifeguard or you've got one already yourself you can also spawn these things in for free Take them to your Avenger and you can actually custom upgrade these as well, which is really, really interesting. Now the lifeguard does have lights and sirens, which is pretty cool. You can get NPCs to pull over for you. 
using this vehicle so for those of you who like to pretend to be a cop in gta this is kind of a good vehicle to use except it's well bright yellow and it says lifeguard on it but hey if you can ignore it you can ignore it i guess the lifeguard is pretty quick it basically takes the granger it makes it rear wheel drive only but I do feel like this thing is a little bit faster than the regular Granger, and it's definitely a little bit cooler as well. So I had to put it in C tier. I think it is the better vehicle. So that's it for the lifeguard. On to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Moonbeam. This thing goes for $32,000 off of Benny's original Motorworks, and it can, of course, be upgraded into the Moonbeam Custom. Now, the Moonbeam, it doesn't have very good performance, I won't lie. It is a four-seater, so you can seat three other players in this thing while you are driving. It does have relatively okay acceleration, and the handling for being a big van is not that terrible, honestly. And for 32 grand, I mean, you really can't go wrong with just owning a Moonbeam. However, the real reason that you get the Moonbeam is to make the Moonbeam custom. So this thing is decent, but it's not that decent overall. Good vehicle, but not the best, that's for sure. So that's it for the Moonbeam, on to the next one. Next up, we have the Declassy Rhapsody. Now the Rhapsody goes for $140,000 and it was added with the Hipsters update to Grand Theft Auto Online, I do believe it is. This thing is really ugly. I really do not like this thing. However, it's not the worst vehicle. It's not even the worst vehicle manufactured by Declassy. As you guys can see, it's in C tier, so it's made it actually pretty high in this list, all things considered. I should have ranked this a little bit lower, but it does actually have some pretty decent performance. The acceleration on this vehicle is quite quick, and the handling, if you have the spoiler equipped, is actually pretty tolerable. So for $140,000, you really cannot go wrong with a Rhapsody, except you can't, because it's absolutely heinous. But if you like it, then you like it, I guess. So that's pretty much it for the Rhapsody. It's got good customization. I mean, it's a unique vehicle. You might as well give it a shot. Next up, we have the Declassy Moonbeam Custom. Now, the Moonbeam Custom goes for $370,000 on top of the initial $32,000 that it takes to get the regular Moonbeam. The Custom variant does have much better performance than the regular Moonbeam. So it is actually quite a pleasure to drive this thing. The acceleration is quite good. The handling is actually quite good as well. And the top speed is actually okay for being a van. So the Moonbeam Custom really is the best variant of the Moonbeam. Not that it was any really contest with that. The Custom has tons of customization as well because of course it is a Benny's vehicle. So you can make this thing very, very unique. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for the Moonbeam Custom. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Rancher XL. This thing goes for a whopping $9,000, so you can steal it off of the street, or of course you can purchase it from Southern San Andreas Super Autos as well. The Ranger XL is a pretty good off-road vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. It's also pretty quick. The acceleration is decent for a $9,000 vehicle. It also handles relatively well for being a big truck essentially, and it also has a pretty decent top speed. Overall, the Rancher XL is actually a personal favorite of mine for off-roading in GTA Online, and I would definitely say that I recommend picking this thing up and giving it a shot for yourself. Worst case scenario, you're down $9,000. So that's pretty much it for the Rancher XL. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Voodoo Custom. Now the custom variant of the Voodoo costs $420,000 to actually create. So it is really, really expensive. However, the car that you do get is a fantastic looking one. The performance still is not that great with the Voodoo Custom variant but it is still a lot better than the regular Voodoo. Overall, the Voodoo Custom is definitely the preferred Voodoo variant. The regular Voodoo sucks. This thing also sucks, but it's a lot better. So definitely, if you're gonna get a Voodoo, you should try to upgrade to the Custom variant. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the Declassy Voodoo Custom in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Saber Turbo coming in at $15,000, or of course, you can steal it off of the street like pretty much everybody does in order to get their Sabre Turbo. The Sabre Turbo for 15 grand is a car that you really cannot go wrong with in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, is it the best car ever? No, absolutely not. But it is a very, very good starter vehicle. Now, I placed this thing very close to the top of C tier because I couldn't quite put it in B tier, but it is really, really good, and I absolutely recommend picking it up. There's nothing wrong with the Sabre Turbo. It's just purely not as good as some of the other vehicles ahead of it, 
in this ranking. It has tons of customization, it's very quick in a straight line, it has decent handling as well for a muscle car. Really there's nothing to dislike about this car. 15 grand and it's yours, or of course you can steal it off the street and customize it any way that you want to. Overall, I think it's a fantastic vehicle and you guys should definitely pick one up. That's it for the Sabre Turbo, let's move on to the final vehicle of C tier. Next up for the final vehicle of C tier, of course we have the Declassy Vigoro. Now it was a hard choice picking this thing versus the Sabre Turbo, however I figured that the Vigoro is ever so slightly more rare. I feel like you see less people driving the Vigoro than you do driving the Sabre Turbo. So, I figured the Vigoro was deserving of being a little bit higher on this list, and I do feel like the Vigoro's performance is also just ever so slightly better than the Sabre Turbos. Now, this is up for debate, this is my personal opinion, which of course is 100% factual and cannot be argued with, by the way, just in case anybody forgot. The Vigoro is very quick in a straight line, it has very decent handling for being an old muscle car like it is. It's got some customization options as well. Overall, it's a very decent vehicle, and it goes for only $21,000. So for 21 grand you can get yourself a Vigoro and you will never regret it. This thing is absolutely awesome. So that's it for the Vigoro and that is it for C tier. It's time to get started with some of the bigger hitters in B tier. So let's get started. To get started with B tier we of course have the Declassy Sabre Turbo Custom. Now the Sabre Turbo Custom is going to cost you $490,000 in order to make this thing into the custom variant which is quite expensive. However it is pretty worth it I would say because the Sabre Turbo Custom is just an even better version of the regular Sabre Turbo. As well as it has much more customization that is available from Benny's. So this thing is very very customizable so if you like customizing cars and you like the Sabre Turbo, this is the car for you. The Sabre Turbo Custom handles much better, accelerates way harder, has a slightly slightly better top speed, overall it just is a better vehicle than the regular Sabre Turbo. And of course because it is a Benny's vehicle, like all other Benny's vehicles, it does have hydraulics, so that is kind of cool. Anyway guys, that's it for the Sabre Turbo Custom to start off B tier, let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Stallion, this thing goes for $71,000 or it is free for any returning player. Now the Stallion I won't lie is not my favorite car, however it does have pretty decent performance, the acceleration is quite nice, it does have relatively good handling as well, however this car has absolutely no customization which is a complete bummer, it's really not that great of a car but it does have pretty good performance and you really can't argue with that. Overall the Stallion for free, I mean you really cannot go wrong with it. It. and even for 71 grand it is still a pretty fantastic car. So that's pretty much it for the Declassy Stallion, let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Burgershot Stallion. This thing goes for $277,000 or it is free for returning players. Now the Burgershot Stallion is just a little tiny bit better than the regular Stallion. If you think of this it's basically the racing version of the Masacro or the Jester it's ever so slightly faster, you probably won't even notice a difference honestly, but it is a very unique looking car because of course it does have a big racing livery on it which is pretty cool. This car also looks a little bit better, it does have a spoiler option which is kind of nice and it also does have a roof which is kind of cool as well. Overall I'd say the Burger Shot Stallion is the one to go for, especially if you have both of them for free, I'd say go for this one every single time. With that being said, that's pretty much it for the Stallion, let's move on to the next vehicle yet again. Next up we have the Declassy Tampa going for $375,000. Now the Declassy Tampa in my opinion is a very very solid muscle car in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now is it the fastest performer, is it the best around a circuit? Absolutely not but it is a very cool car for free mode in my opinion. It also has quite a bit of customization, it's got good acceleration, and it's got semi-decent handling. As far as old muscle cars go, the handling really is not that bad. However, at the same time, it's not that good either. So just take it with a grain of salt, this thing is kinda good, but it can be kinda bad as well. Overall the Tampa is still a very good looking car, and a very good performer in my opinion, and for $375,000, I would say it is a pretty good car to have. So that's it for the Declassy Tampa, let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Tornado Mariachi. Now this is a rare car in Grand Theft Auto Online and it's very challenging to get and you must know exactly how to get it if you want to get one of these. Luckily for you I have a video showing how to get a Tornado Mariachi in Grand Theft Auto Online and it is still working to my knowledge. The Tornado Mariachi, very rare vehicle, as you guys can see it's got some guitars in the back, it's got a mariachi hat as well as some other various 
themed things as well. This car is rare. Unfortunately, there's no customization for it, but it is still a rare car, which makes it very cool in my opinion at least. So that's it for the Tornado Mariachi. On to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Yosemite going for $485,000. Now, I won't lie, the Yosemite is not my favorite vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, it is still pretty cool. It's one of those vehicles where when you start going or when you stop, the suspension lowers and raises depending on what you're doing, which I think is kind of cool. This truck also has a decent amount of customization and it's pretty fun to drive. So you should definitely pick one of these things up if you got some money lying around. $485,000 is kind of a lot for what you get, but it is still pretty cool. So there you have it. Up next, we have the Declassy Drift Yosemite. This thing goes for between $980,000 or $1.3 million if you do not have the trade price. Now this makes the Yosemite into a drift truck essentially. It puts some flared arches on it and it gives it some turbos sticking out of the hood as well as a few more customization options and things like that. And it also makes the car a little bit less drivable or more driftable depending on how you want to look at it. Now I'm not really a big fan of the Drift Yosemite either, but it is still a pretty cool and very unique truck in Grand Theft Auto Online, so I felt like it was deserving to be closer to the top of B tier. This thing is also pretty fast in a straight line, it just kind of has bad handling, but that's because it's a drift truck and it's meant to drift. So there you have it. Anyway guys, that's it for the Declassy Drift Yosemite. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up we have the Declassy Tulip. Now the Tulip goes for $720,000 in Grand Theft Auto Online and it is a four door muscle car, which is pretty unique. Although I don't really know how four players can sit in this thing because the back doors are absolutely tiny looking. Now, the Tulip is a pretty quick vehicle. It's also got some good customization options as well. Overall, it's a decent muscle car. Now, are you going to win any races with it? Probably not, unless they're a drag race. This thing is insanely fast in a straight line, but even still, there are faster muscle cars nowadays. However, when this thing was new, it was definitely one of the fastest drag cars in the game. Overall, the Tulip is a pretty solid vehicle. It's one that you don't really see people driving these days anymore, which is pretty sad because it is really, really unique and pretty awesome. So that's it for the Declassy Tulip. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Vamos for $600,000. This thing is pretty sick. However, it's not exactly my favorite car. The Declassy Vamos has a lot of really good customization that you can do to it. However, it also has something called an advanced handling flag or several of them actually. This means that when you're driving this thing, all of a sudden it will become completely uncontrollable at a certain speed. So as you guys can see right now, I'm driving straight, but the car is very, very hard to control. It feels like there's air underneath it and it's pushing it around. This is because of the advanced handling flag. It makes it very hard to drive. However, it is a really cool muscle car. And for 600K, it is kind of a good deal. However, the advanced handling flags do make this thing somewhat undrivable and really kind of annoying which is unfortunate because I do think it is a super sick looking vehicle, but unfortunately those advanced handling flags do play some part in this thing's ranking being a little bit lower on this list. Anyway guys, that's it for the Declassy Vamos. Let's move on to the next vehicle. For the final vehicle of B tier, we of course have the Declassy Hot Ring Saber. This thing was free last week and it is a pretty unique vehicle. Now, if you didn't get this thing when it was free, it will cost you $830,000 in order to actually buy it. The Hot Ring Saber is really cool. It does have some good customization options. However, there's not too many of them. And the other problem with the Hot Ring Saber is it's not exactly the greatest car for free mode. It's very good in Hot Ring Saber races, but as far as free mode goes, uh, there are kind of better cars, I won't lie. It doesn't have the greatest handling ever. It also doesn't have the greatest acceleration or top speed ever. Really, it's just meant for the Hot Ring circuit and nothing more than that, really. So it's really cool, but I don't think that I can actually recommend anybody to buy this thing as far as just using it as a free mode vehicle. It's really not that great. So that's it for B tier. It's time to move on to some of the big, big boys in A tier. So let's get started. Next up, we have the Declassy Mamba to start off A tier. This thing goes for $1 million, and for that price, you do get a pretty unique vehicle. This thing's obviously based off of the older Shelby Cobra, which is a very, very cool vehicle in real life. And in Grand Theft Auto Online, it is just as cool. Now, unfortunately, the Mamba is not the greatest handling vehicle of all time, that's for sure. This thing actually handles pretty terribly, but I felt like it was deserving of A tier because of its uniqueness 
And it does have a few customization options here and there, which you can use to make this thing a little bit more unique. The Mamba's very quick in a straight line. Its handling is a little bit shoddy sometimes, but it could be a lot worse, that's for sure. So that's pretty much it for the Mamba to start off A tier. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Impaler for $250,000 if you have the trade price or $330,000 if you do not have the trade price. Now, I just recently did a customization and review on this car, and I do think that it is a pretty good vehicle. Overall, it has decent acceleration. The handling is actually pretty good as well for being an old muscle car. It's got some good customization options. It looks pretty good. It's fun to drive. Overall, there's really nothing to dislike about this vehicle and it's relatively cheap as well, so that is just another bonus. On top of that, it also has an Arena War variant that you can upgrade it to, to make it a little bit more crazy. So that's pretty much it for the Impaler, let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Yosemite Rancher. Now the Yosemite Rancher is basically the Declassy Yosemite, but you spend another $700,000 on it and it turns it into the Rancher variant which gives it a Benny's upgrade and much, much more customization. Now the Rancher is my favorite rendition of the Yosemite. In fact, it's actually the only version of the Yosemite that I really, truly like. It's pretty quick. It's got good ground clearance, so it's a lot better for off-roading. It's extremely fast. It has good handling. Really, there's no downside to upgrading this thing other than that it costs $700,000 on top of buying a Yosemite. So it is a little bit expensive to do this. However, I would say that the Rancher is definitely the way to go when it comes to the Yosemite, at least for me personally, which of course means that I'm right because this list is 100% factual and cannot be argued with. So that's it for the Rancher. Let's move on to the next vehicle again. Next up, we have the Declassy Drift Tampa coming in at just under $1 million. Now the Drift Tampa is one of my favorite vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. It is obviously pretty good for drifting, hence it's named the Drift Tampa. Although it could be a little bit better, let's be honest. It's not the best drift vehicle anymore, but it is pretty cool. No doubt about it, it looks absolutely insane. I love how this thing looks. I'm not really sure why this thing is a Declassy and not a Vap, and same with the regular Tampa. I feel like they both look like they should be Mustangs, but again, I could be wrong, I suppose. Overall, the Drift Tampa does have pretty good acceleration. It's also got relatively good handling for being a drift vehicle. However, it doesn't have much customization, which is kind of a disappointment because this thing with customization could have been something really, really special, I feel like. Overall, the Drift Tampa is still a solid vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, not exactly the best, but far from the worst either. So that's it for the Drift Tampa. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Draugr. Now, the Draugr is an absolutely fantastic off-roader in Grand Theft Auto Online. Obviously, this thing was added with the Criminal Enterprises DLC and Ever since I've owned this thing, I have not used anything else off-road. The Draugr is super, super fast on-road and off-road. However, off-road, this thing really starts to shine. I do believe that this is one of, if not the fastest off-road class vehicle in the entire game right now. Of course, with four wheels. It's not gonna be faster than any of the dirt bikes, but this thing, as far as four-wheeled off-road vehicles go, I do believe it is probably the fastest in the entire game now, which is absolutely insane. Now, the Draugr does come at a cost, $1.4 million if you have the trade price and $1.8 million if you do not have the trade price. Either way, it is absolutely worth picking this thing up. It is a fantastic vehicle and you cannot go wrong with owning one. So that's it for the Draugr. It's time to move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Arena War Impaler. Now the Impaler is a fantastic car like I already mentioned, however the Arena War upgrades with this thing make it even better. You can of course equip it with machine guns, you can equip it with a proximity mine dropper. The car is also faster when it is the Arena War variant as well. I must say the handling seems to go down a little bit, uh, it seems a little bit harder to drive this car, but it is a lot cooler in a general sense. Of course, obviously this one is done up like crazy, but you can make your car a little more low key than this if you so choose. And of course, this is the Nightmare variant. There is of course the Apocalypse variant as well as the Future Shock variant. So no matter what you do, the Arena War Impaler is a fantastic vehicle and I definitely recommend picking it up. So that's it for the Impaler. Let's move on to the next and final vehicle of A tier. Next up, we have the Declassy Brutus. This thing is regarded as one of the best Arena War vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. So I felt like it deserved to be right at the top of A tier. However, it's not quite good enough to be S tier in my opinion. Now this is the unupgraded version of the Brutus. There are of course the three different Arena War variants of this thing. 
all with their own unique styling. There's the Nightmare variant, the Future Shock, and of course, and of course the Apocalypse variant of the Brutus as well. This thing can be equipped with machine guns, proximity mines, you name it, basically it can have it. The Brutus is also quite quick, could be faster, but it could be a lot slower as well. However, this thing does go for a lot of money. $2 million if you do have the trade price and $2.6 million if you do not have the trade price. So it is very expensive for what you get but it is a pretty cool vehicle. So with that being said, that is the final vehicle of A tier. It's time to move on to some of the absolute best Declassy vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. So let's get started. To start off S tier, we of course have the Declassy DR1. This thing goes for $3 million and it is by far the best overall performing vehicle that Declassy makes in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, in terms of open wheel cars, it's not the best open wheel car. There are a couple of ones that are just a little bit better than this thing. So I can't rank it any higher than it is in this list. However, it is definitely the best to classy vehicle as far as performance goes overall. It has absolutely fantastic handling, good acceleration. It does have a bit of a piss weak top speed, but it is still a very good vehicle nonetheless. The Declassy DR1 for $3 million is a little bit on the expensive side, especially considering that you can get the Benefactor BR8 for only a couple hundred thousand dollars more and it is a better performing vehicle. Still, the DR1 is fantastic, do not get me wrong. Anyway guys, that's it for the Declassy DR1. Let's move on to the next S tier Declassy vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Granger 3600 LX. This is the cheapest Imani Tech capable vehicle in the entire game. This thing goes for about $1,035,000, and it does have some pretty decent performance, as well as it has Imani Tech, like I mentioned. So you can equip this thing with a missile lock-on jammer, which is very, very nice. You can also equip it with a proximity mine dropper, which is pretty good as well. You can also have machine guns on the front of it, and you can equip it with some armor to help resist more explosives and more bullets. Overall, the Granger 3600 LX is one of the more useful vehicles in all of Grand Theft Auto Online, and it is certainly one of the more useful the classy vehicles as well. So that's pretty much it for the Granger 3600 LX. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the Declassy Scramjet. This thing goes for three and a half million dollars and it is the fastest way to find your way into someone's backyard pool in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. The Scramjet has a jump boost. It also has a rocket boost as well. It's got equipped machine guns on this thing that can do a decent amount of damage as well as it does have some of the most aggressive tracking missiles in the entire game. Now, the Scramjet has absolutely no armor protection, but it is still a very fun vehicle to drive and it's a good vehicle to use in PvP if you get good with it. The Scramjet generally is a very fun vehicle in online, and it's something that I would definitely say that I recommend picking up. For three and a half million dollars, you will not find your way into a backyard pool faster. I swear to God, this is unscripted. I swear to God. Okay, we got pretty close. We got pretty close. Anyway, guys, that's it for the Scramjet. Let's move on to the next vehicle. Next up, we have the brand new Declassy Vigoro ZX. Now, the ZX goes for just under $2 million in Grand Theft Auto Online, and it is an HSW equipable car if you guys are on the Expanded and Enhanced Edition. However, even if you're not on the Expanded and Enhanced Edition, this is one of the fastest muscle cars in the entire game. I believe it is actually within the top 10 around a circuit. The Vigoro ZX has very good handling. It also has quite a bit of customization that can be done to it to make it a little bit more unique and personalized. Overall, I'm a super big fan of this car. I'm super happy to finally have a modern day Camaro in Grand Theft Auto Online, and I know a lot of you guys in the community are as well. The Vigoro ZX to me is definitely deserving of being this high on the list after the long wait that we had to get this thing and then the performance being as good as it is. Overall, the Declassy Vigoro ZX is a fantastic car and I would definitely recommend picking this thing up more than almost any other vehicle on this list so far. So that's pretty much it for the Vigoro ZX. It's time to move on to the number one Declassy vehicle in Grand Theft Auto Online. And of course, the number one Declassy vehicle in all of Grand Theft Auto Online is the Weaponized Tampa. Now the Weaponized Tampa is only this good if you have a lot of your bunker research unlocked. The Weaponized Tampa has absolutely no armor protection whatsoever. However, it does have absolutely fantastic armament. This thing goes for $1.6 million if you have the trade price unlocked or $2.1 million if you do not have the trade price unlocked. This Tampa instead of the regular one is all wheel drive as well. So off-roading becomes a little bit easier as well as acceleration off the line. Now, as far as this thing goes, once you have the dual minigun turret equipped, 
and unlocked with the bunker, this vehicle can be absolutely lethal. These dual miniguns do so much damage, you can destroy pretty much any vehicle that you come across with extreme ease using these dual mounted machine guns. Now on top of this, the Tampa is also equipped with front mounted missiles, which are really, really good for taking out civilians and players alike. No matter what you wanna do, you can take them out with this thing very, very easily. On top of that, if you have somebody who's chasing you, you have this rear mounted mortar, which you can shoot out of, and it can take out anything that's coming in behind you. And you can absolutely spam this thing as well. On top of that, it also has an equipable proximity mine dropper, so you can shoot the mortar as well as drop proximity mines behind you, and you will pretty much be guaranteed to just remove whatever is tailing you from existence. On top of this, the weaponized Tampa is also a very quick vehicle. It's very good looking. There's tons of customization as well. Really, there's no reason to not own a weaponized Tampa in Grand Theft Auto Online. The only thing that this thing is not good at is protecting you, the driver, because of course it does have that absolutely piss weak armor that can't even take a single explosive. But that's not why you buy this thing, you use it against NPCs or players from a distance, you never get too close with this. And if you follow those sort of rules, you will do pretty alright with the weaponized Tampa. So there you have it guys, that has been the ultimate to classy vehicle tier list in Grand Theft Auto Online. If you enjoyed this video, a like is of course appreciated. This took hours to create. Dislike if you didn't enjoy the video, of course. Subscribe if you guys are new. Comment down below. Let me know that I'm absolutely 100% factually correct in my ranking of all of these vehicles in the comments down below. I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.